Hello everyone. So <laughs> I've made a mistake. I've got another bit of trouble with this board um, and I need to try and fix it. I have identified the mistake. So uh, we're just sort of going to try and create a, <laughs> a bodge, another bodge. There's always a bodge. So I don't even know if this is going out live. Um, can someone just post a message in the chat and say you're live? That would be useful. Anyway, so let's jump to this. So I brought all my stuff. Hey, Ethan. Thank you, by the way. Um, I moved a lot of my workbench onto my actual bench. So I brought this board in and I want to actually, we'll go to the schematic first and then you can actually see what, uh, what the issue is. So this is the schematic for the uh, Millie's cog clock. God. <laughs> um, so lots of people have sort of told me it's um, sent something clock. I can't remember, basically, because I'm not using the, uh, the one thousandth of a second bit. So uh, I'm just doing it on the, uh, the tens and the hundreds. Anyhow. I was going through this just to check all my values because uh, I didn't write any on there, which is uh, a little bit annoying. So I thought oh, I, I best go in because I know this is a 10k. I know what they all are, but I want to put the values in so that when I'm looking at it on the board, I can quickly refer to them because um, they're only marked with their uh, number. So R68 and I need to know whether that is 10k. And then I was going through and I was like, oh yeah, I can't remember which one of these is which. So one of these resistors on my, this is essentially the clock itself. This is a, a 4.096 megahertz crystal. And it's, I'm using the 4060 to divide it down. And one of these is a 10 meg resistor and another one is a 220 ohm resistor. And I was like, which one is which? So I went back to the breadboard to have a look. And I figured it out that this one's the, the 10 meg and this one's the 220. And I realized <laughs> this side of the crystal is not connected to anything. So at some point I've fallen asleep while making this or been a bit tipsy maybe. And it's wrong. That is not a reflection of what's on the breadboard, which is very annoying. So I now have to figure out what the correct uh, way of wiring this up is. I already know. I've looked at the breadboard. I was infuriated when I saw that and realized that I'd made a mistake on these boards, which came out really well. Yeah, I was genuinely upset. So I've decided to have a beer think about it and make some more mistakes. Although we've got loads of people in the chat now. So we've got uh, Ethan, Stephen Ludgates here. Hello, Ludders. Oi, I dropped you a message in Discord and you have not responded. Uh, Dave Darko's here. Uh, Andy Mouse, we've got Rob. Dustin's here, hey Dustin. Gerald's here. A good old don't panic profile picture. Hey, Julian. I've got Mark Olson, Christian, and that's it. Wonderful. Thanks for all coming. Um, well, we're going to be playing about with this clock and trying to fix it. So basically you're here for a bodge session. I've got me some little bodge wires. Well, I'm using them as bodge wires. They're just red and black wires. Um, and I've got some of the components to make this work. Now we're not going to be putting the whole clock together because it's going to take too long to do that. Plus, I don't know what else is wrong. So we're just going to do it bit by bit. We're going to get the clock working. I've got something I can measure the clock with. Um, it might, I might even be able to do it with a multimeter, although I don't know if that loads too heavy or not. But we've got the uh, 4060. So the 4060, I've only got 10 of those because I've only got 10 boards. Uh, the 4073 I don't need some 220 ohm resistors, 10 meg resistors, 
22 picofarad capacitors. 10 Ks I don't need for this. The USB connector I'll need and a crystal and that is it. So just those components and what we're gonna put on the board. But, oh, Gerald, that's very kind. There is absolutely no need for anyone to do any super chats. I don't encourage it at all. It's your money. You should spend it. But thank you, it's very kind. So yeah, I'm gonna drink a little bit more of this beer. And uh, show you what we need to do. So the problem with this board is, let me just zoom in so you can see. It's around there. So this is probably gonna time out in a second, but God, it's very difficult to see those traces, isn't it? Let's come in a bit more and we'll brighten this image up. does mean my frame rate goes down but so back on in fact let's we'll jump back to the schematic quickly and then we can see which uh, resistors it is that we need to worry about so in here we've got R2 and R1 oh god so that means this is this is the very first part of the schematic I made and I made it wrong Wow. Um, although this is C10, so I must have modified it at some point, probably just to change a footprint or something. But um, this is the area we're looking for. So we want R1 and R2. And R1 is the 10 meg, and R2 is the 220. So if we just jump back to the board here, and hopefully that's bright enough. If we just come in, the frame rate is tanking, but. So just here is R2 and that one there is R1. And there are tracks that run underneath that 4060. We need to cut those. And we're gonna have to cut the two there as well because this thing is not wired correctly. So we're gonna have to be very careful and cut that trace just there. Actually, I could cut it underneath the chip, it doesn't matter. But those two, do you know this board is massive. I actually have loads of room to have laid this out in a, in a better way and just moved components out a little and then bodging would have been a lot easier so <laughs> julian says it's ugly surface mount <laughs> eric's here hi eric yeah i do have a beer so just to sort of quickly round up what the problem is so my Breadboard layout has those two resistors meeting at a single point, and that single point goes to pin 11. And one side of the crystal goes straight to pin 10 and goes through the uh, 10 meg resistor to meet at the other pin 11. So it's just wrong. It's just plain wrong. So plain, plain wrong, plain wrong. So this is the correct one. Let's jump over to here. So this is this is what it should look like. So I've just drawn it over the original. So we're on, on version two. Uh, so really, if I was paying attention, I would have moved these components around a bit nicer. So that one could have been sat exactly where that R10 is, R1 rather. So that's what we need to do. We need to rewire um, this correctly. Now, I've already been into the schematic. We're not looking at the right screen. There we go, sorry. Um, so yeah, this is what it should look like. And that's what it does look like right now. So I've just made a mistake. <laughs> Quite a few mistakes really. There's a few connections that are out there, but um, I think we can bodge this by just cutting the traces and wiring things together. So I don't need to cut the trace here 
from um, the 10 meg resistor, but I do need to bodge across and bypass it. Uh, but I need to cut the wire from, 10, from the 10 meg resistor to pin 10 and that one to there. So actually there's quite a lot to do. That's frustrating. So this is the board at the moment. So um, I flipped it. So this isn't the normal view. So I've gone into here and just, uh, so this is the bottom side of the board as you look at the board. But in order to read the tracks, it's easier if you just flip the board and then you're looking at what you see when you flip the board over to view the tracks. So um, I don't need to worry about R1, I think. Yeah, R1's in the right place. So that connection to the crystal can stay, but it's two other connections have to go. So yeah, it can't go over to here where it connects through to this resistor and that resistor does not go to pin 11. So we'll cut this trace and we'll cut those two traces there. And then we'll try and figure out where we're, <laughs> where we're putting everything. Then Julian says he bets it works without the uh, 10 meg resistor. I tell you what, I can check. Hang on a second. I'm going to mute myself and go over to the bench where I've got it all breadboarded up. I don't think I can bring it over. Maybe I can, we'll see. Right, so I can bring it over here, it turns out. Now, it looks super dark to me, but... Oh, I'm on the wrong screen, that's why. So let's zoom in, and uh, this is the part of the circuit that we're looking at. So this is the 4060. Let's see if I can power it up with this USB power bank. There we go. So powered up and running. So you want to take the 10 meg out. Well, I'll have to bridge that over, won't we? Let me see if I can get a, uh, I'll just take it out and you can see. Well, I'll be. Why is that working? Julian. Wow.
Oh, Sand Tan doesn't like my jumpers. Wow. Tough. <laughs> That's just the way it is. It's a lot easier than cutting wires to length just using pre prepared jumpers. Well, it does work without the 10 meg. Still, that doesn't help too much um, because it's still not connected in the right way. So, okay, if I can take that out, then I just need to bodge a wire from one side of the crystal over to pin 10. I need to cut the connection on pin 10 because there's only one connection to pin 10. And yeah, I suppose they don't pull a lot of current, do they? Um, so if I cut, let's just do it now. We'll get rid of this board now though. Sorry, I'm gonna have to take my mic off again because I can't get far enough away from the bench. There we go. Right. Let's start cutting traces. <laughs> right, so it is, I'll cut both of them on R2 and the one from R1. Um, and then we won't need to populate R1. Hmm, that blade looks rubbish. Let's get a new one. I think this is how you're going to do this. I have no idea, really. You know, the problem with these blackboards is that I can barely see <laughs> the traces. So I could bridge this across. Is that pin 10? Let's have a look. And then just cut these two. So I wouldn't need to install the 10. Let's have a little, yeah. So that, that would work. And I just need to cut these two. All right, we'll cut both of them on our two. And then Do I need to cut both of them? I need to think about it. You want to see the schematic again? Sure. What, the new one or the old one? Or the PCB layout? So Lassie says I don't need to cut the traces. Remove R2, replace R1, wire from R2 to C2, C1. Okay, let me think about that for a second, because I sort of need to understand what you're saying too before I do something. I know what you're you're talking about. It, basically, I'm flipping the crystal around and using the other component on the other side. Let's have a look what it actually looks like right now. So, let's bring the desktop up. So this is what it actually looks like now. And so if we, I think this is what you're saying. Um, if you just ignore the fact that R2 and R1 are different because we can just make them 
whichever one we want. So I need, I don't need R1, but I need one side of my crystal to go to pin 10, straight to pin 10. And the other side to go to the resistor and go to 11. Hang on, is that right? So if I remove that, So we need one going, that one goes to pin 11. So that's our R2 or our R1, doesn't matter. And then the other guy's side goes to 10. So this is a current schematic and what is currently there. Yeah, Julian, it, do, it does say um, in loads of things I've read that it's a, a higher uh, resistance, but honestly, I couldn't get it to work without a low value. Yeah, I thought that I thought the 10 was in there to start the oscillation, honestly, but it seemed to work when I took it out. So maybe it's because it's already started. I don't know what I'm I'm going to. Um, I'm going to leave it in because I've ordered the components and it's on the board. So um, if I change so 11, So if R2 becomes Okay, so if R2 becomes R1, that becomes a 10 meg, then it's basically in the right spot already. It just needs a Ah oh, no, it doesn't. It's not in the right spot. Sorry, Lassie, I don't know what you mean. So I am going to cut the board because I, if I can't figure out what you mean, then I'm going to make a mistake at some point along the way. That's just basically how it's going to be, unless I can figure it out what you're trying to explain to me. So in my mind, I need to cut this line here, bodge over to this one here, and if I cut that one, I can bodge across there. That gives it straight through to the 10, which I need it to do, and then take a bodge wire from there to that pad there. So that's one, two, three bodge wires. It's quite a big bottle of beer. Hello, Brian. <laughs> it's um, 650, it's a pint basically, I think. Well, it's a little bit more than a pint, but don't tell anyone. Tiny LED matrix is here, hiya. You've got David B as well and Simon Howroyd. Yeah, it's tiny hands, that's all it is. Uh, how do I change this? Sorry, my computer's done this thing where at night time it changes the colour. I can't remember what it's called. Is it night light? That's it. And it's going to make me feel sleepy. There we go. I think Jeremy Beadle only has the one small hand. 
Right, so what was I doing? Cutting track, the track there and the track there. All right, let's do that then. R2 is 10 meg? No, it isn't, is it? Yes, it is. No, it's not. That's not the 10 meg one. I'm fairly sure. I put the 10 meg here for R1. Oh, Julian, I'm going to have to check. Oh. Right. No, oh, I need a bloody multimeter. Oh, I got a new bag for my tools, which I'm really pleased with. People told me not to get a bag. Uh, they said get a um, just put it in a box instead. But I bought one of these. Work Pro, and it's really ace, like it, it opens up really wide, so I put all my multimeters in there, and you can zip it up so it doesn't get dust and stuff in, and it means I can put all my uh, bits and bobs in there. In fact, let's just use the little multimeter. Or you can just drop it. Sorry about that loud noise. Right, let's... Let's hope Julian is wrong, um, because I really don't want to have to redo the schematic live. After admitting one mistake, I don't want there to be an, an extra one. Right, so I think that's 10 meg. You know I can't read the colour codes, so... Yeah, it is a bit blokey, isn't it? It's a colour scheme. I wish I'd... I'll put a pump on on it later or something. So I think this is 10 meg. I can't read the color codes, so um, I'm just going to measure it in circuit. <laughs> okay, this thing cannot read those. Let's get the other, let's get the big boy one out. And hopefully he can. It might be because I'm measuring it in circuit. We can change our minds about it in a minute if we have to. Yeah, so that's my 10 meg. And then this one is my 220. So 10 meg goes from the crystal to pin 11. Um, a meeting with R2. And that side of the crystal goes to pin 10 on here. So if we jump back to this schematic, R1 is 10 meg because it goes on this side to pin 10. So we need it, it is definitely that one. So on our, on our hour, I mean, we say hour, um, just throwing you in with me. So I need to bridge there, cut this, and then jumper this over to that side of the resistor. This line needs to be cut, and that needs to go over to that side of the crystal. Okay, I think. We'll see. I thought this was going to be like super simple, but you've um, absolutely <laughs> thrown me for a loop there. Julian, stop it. You're a monster. Oh, Simon, what software is that? Doesn't look like Eagle. It isn't Eagle. 
I've ditched Eagle for now, not forever maybe. It's it's KiCad or KiCad, however you want to say it. I kind of jump between the two, but I changed the colors a bit to make me feel a bit more like it was Eagle. And honestly, I've kind of now forgotten that it isn't Eagle. So I need to cut this trace here. I wonder if that's actually cut. Multimeter time. Let's do a little continuity. Yep. I'll just make sure none of them are connected to ground. No, nope, that's fine. That is cut. Wow, that was a lot easier. I was quite scared I was going to drag that right across. <laughs> the board itself that would have been a pain but i'm just going to view it a bit closer and show you let's uh i know it's getting darker it's about to get a bit brighter Well, I'm really surprised it cut so well. Very surprised, actually. Just going to double check. <laughs> I don't trust myself. Okay, it did, it did cut it, fine. Good. Yeah, the reason I switched over to KiCad was, um, was to make this board. So I learned how to use it just so I could make this board um, because it was too big for the free version of Eagle. And not that that is a real problem. I've got now a licensed copy of Eagle, but I just don't really want to stick with it. So I'm not going to use it. Now we need to um, cut this trace here. Don't cut them all, David. Don't cut them all. Okay. <laughs> I hope that worked. Oh, the secret, the secret to that, David B, is to never use the auto router. They're always useful if you want to see if a circuit, like Julian likes the auto router, I think. They're useful to see if a circuit can be routed easily enough. You don't need to be like a superhuman to do it. So is that connected still? No, how easy is that to cut a trace? I could like drop something on a board and cut a trace. Okay. So we need to solder on some components now, I guess. I'm going to leave it up to you whether I use hot air or a soldering iron, because I've got both here. So you guys can just tell me which one you want and we'll do that. Ah, uh, Howard from Dubious Engineering is here. Hi, Howard. Hey, Liz. Yeah, I was working on that, um, the BPM Beat project today, you know, and uh, I was trying to do it in MicroPython. Yeah, that's not quite happened yet. Uh, <laughs> I was trying out all the buttons and I think I've come up with a, an interesting solution. It's a hybrid solution to give us a bit more flexibility. So I'll tell you what, while we're, I'll just open packets of stuff here because I've got to get all the components out. 
I don't know, I can tell you about it if you want, Liz, now, or I can, we can just wait for a video. So these are the 220 nano picofarad, I hope. Yeah, picofarad, picofarad capacitors for loading up that crystal. So um, basically buttons, rubbish. Don't work very well, Liz, for this beat thing. If any of you don't know, when, oh, I've lost a component already. And another one, oh, damn it. They're so small. Oh, I found them both. God, I'm a genius. So this, it's a beat project thing. Julian is gonna do my nut in. Right, uh, tweezers. So the beat project, in fact, Julian did a, a video. Uh, was it, did it come out today? I can't, it might have been yesterday. Um, but it was about a, a drum synth, um, which is sort of a little bit like what we're doing, um, especially since yours was driven by a, or triggered by a, a piezo, piezo. I think I say piezo because it sounds fancy, but it's, uh, it's just what I fancy saying. Um, no, I'm sure Julian will behave. We can always cut some more traces later on if I got it wrong. So yeah, this beat project I'm doing with Liz. Liz is like well ahead of me, honestly. Liz can do um, like MicroPython and stuff and I can not really do MicroPython very well. So, um, I was looking at the input devices and I looked at buttons. I looked at um, these little piezo speakers. They're in, the, in like an enclosed shell. A flat piezo, piezo transducer. And um, what was the other thing? Oh, a little electric microphone. Um, and I thought the piezo was the best, but Liz likes the touch IC, not IC, sorry, that sort of, what is it, cap, like cap touch. And so um, that can work. So Liz has already demonstrated that the cap touch works. We're doing hot air, aren't we? So I don't want to get everything out just yet. I need to take my mic off. I'm just going to mute. Yeah, so Liz likes the cap touch stuff. And I, I've done some cap touch with, um, with microcontrollers, but also with the TTP233, and I really loved that thing. So um, I thought, well, why don't we merge the two together? Because there are benefits to the touch. Like it's nice, it's easy. You can put it on a circuit board, it's super simple. And uh, a lot of it can just be done in software, but touch is limited in that you can't get force information from that. Um, you could get duration, which is great, but you can't get force. Like how hard did someone hit that thing? Because it's not analog, it's just digital on off. Um, although you might be able to get how big was the thing that was touching the thing, I don't know. But basically with a transducer, the piezo, you can, um, I need something to stick this stuff on, post it, no, perfect. With, um, with a piezo, you can get force information. So how light was the tap? So that you can have harder and lighter taps. So that's basically what I was looking at. Right, we'll come back down to the, the desk now because it's just me. Um, 
I'm just going to squeeze out some <laughs> squeeze out some paste. Hopefully it's warmed up enough. It was in the fridge. That is more than enough. Oh, I've forgotten the toothpicks. Hang on. Right, I've got this. I bought these. You can get like five of these for 99p. It was pretty good. So, where are we at? We've got R1. Oh God, Julian, you've messed me up. I can't remember what R1 is. That's the 10 meg. So good, because I've already got that one out. So R1. Maybe I should have cleaned this board first. I've had my greasy fingers all over it. It's probably enough. In fact, we could come in a bit closer. I can't really see this. Let's see. A bit closer than that. That's enough. It's dangerously close to that trace. Don't worry, it'll jump out again in a second because it only zooms in for a short period of time. <gasps> no! Oh, I've got it. It landed in my lap. Whew. Is that the right one? A one and six zeros, probably. Oh, this is not, I need to rest my hand on something. It's a bit too awkward. Lord, <laughs> oh, that is so small. Look at it. That looks ugly as well. Okay, then we've got the two capacitors. I've only got one resistor out for now because they're so small, I reckon I would have um, mixed it up. I don't remember who told me to put use a toothpick, but thank you whoever did that. Rather than trying to squeeze it out of the syringe onto the pads. There we go. Let's get those on. And one. And there's two. That'll be all right. See you, David. Okay, I'm gonna turn that air off for now. I just wanted to check it's working. Oh, it's a bit smelly. What am I burning? I don't know. So 22, and the other one was 200, wasn't it? There we go, 200. Not that you can read it, because it's really far away. Oh yeah, Julian's doing a competition, everyone. So um, it's on JLC PCB, and uh, he's he's got his vocoder project. This is like your magnum opus, isn't it? Your oh, I was going to say swan song, but that's not nice. I mean, it's your last thing. Who knows, Mark? Who knows? So yeah, head over and vote for it. You do have to register with JLC, I think, but. 
you know, you could be making circuit boards with them anyway. This one's a JLC. Hashtag not sponsored yet. I hate tape. Getting components out of tape. Oh, there we go, it's out now. We need up them there. We can't talk. Need a bit more paste here. That'll probably do. Now we have to just... Oh, wow. It dropped correctly. That's good. There we go. Not too shaky. You had to look up Magnum Opus. I think it's only because I like, um, oh god, I can't even remember what the film's called now. Alright, let's get those soldered on. It's at 100 degrees. Oh, I was doing some heat shrink. What temperature do I go for? Hang on, it probably says on the tube. No? 210? Oh, sugars, hang on a minute. Someone has forgotten that he doesn't want to solder on this mat. Uh, I've, got, I've got shaky hands because my um, blood sugar is pretty low. Because it's been a very long time since I've eaten. I ate at lunchtime and I haven't really had anything since. Should we get that? Um, actually, we'll leave the crystal off because I might have to heat this board a lot. So this isn't a real floppy disk, by the way. It's um, a silicon uh, thing for putting your drinks on. Two hundred degrees doesn't seem to be doing it. Oh, there we go. Oh, <laughs> careful now. Let's um, see if we can't focus up here. So there's my cut trace. And uh, there's a bit of some solder balls there. Oops, don't want to get too far away. Oh, he's upside down. That's frustrating, isn't it? Hang on, let me grab a toothbrush and some IPA. Oh, I can see it's out of focus, sorry. I'm just trying to put my mic back on. There we go. Whoop. Oh, whoops. Let's turn that off. Now recording video.
Mm, let's have a little, a little look, see again, and just see if I've cleared some of that away. Well, still a bit, it's not going to do anything though. Yeah, that's fine. Focus. There we go. Right, now we just need to get the crystal on. I guess we're going to hot air this as well, because I think I said I would. Hang on a minute, let's just... There's not a lot of room there, is there? Okay. I definitely don't need to do the whole underneath bit too much. That'll do. I've never even considered hot air soldering one of these. I don't know how well it will go. <laughs> so everyone else in doctors have told me that you should always keep a bar of dark chocolate and can of full fat genuine Coca-Cola in the lab next to the first aid kit for emergencies. I like that. Oh, careful, don't unplug the camera. I can't quite tell if that's soldered, I'll look at it in a second. Uh, let's have a quick look and see if that has soldered. I quite like having this camera here because it's... I'd say not. That doesn't look very clean. Let's have a look at the other side. Yeah, that looks right. But the other side... Nah, we'll have to do that bit again. All right. I'm just going to stick a bit more paste on it. I could put a bit of flux on there too, but we'll just put some paste on, it's fine. Yeah, I don't like, um, I don't particularly like doing it either. It just doesn't seem like the kind of thing you want to get too hot, does it? I think it's because they have a rating of accuracy for temperature and that makes me um, concerned. I'm sure it'll cool down. It'll cool down as my beer warms up because I've stopped drinking it. That looks fine to me. We'll leave it there. Wow, it's definitely soldered. I don't know how nice it looks. There's a bit of a blob on the can. Ow, it's warm. Sorry if that was very loud. Yeah, that was quite hot. 
Wow, those proper ovened ones. Um, <laughs> uh, the mat has suffered a little. It'll be all right. This has gotten very warm, so while it it's fine, it's um, sort of gone through that. So maybe I need to spend less time on it. Now we need the 4060, and I did say we'd do um, with hot air, so I guess we are. And then we can look at the bodge wires. Now I'm going to have to refer to my PCB layout to figure out which way, <laughs> which way around that goes. Ah, uh, Julius or Howard rather. I have got a um, a better heat mat, but it's kind of ugly. It's made out of uh, material that you wrap around car exhausts, so it's pretty good. Now which way around? I think it goes with the text. I think I did it that way so that pin one is on this side. I just want to check. Yeah, pin one goes towards the crystal so it does read the correct way. Although that isn't echoed here. <laughs> the 4017 goes that way. Brilliant. Well luckily we're doing a Rev 2 so do you know what? I think we can just draw a line across that. I saw a, so I hate um, this. This thing is rubbish. I don't like it at all for dispensing paste, but I did see one that had a much nicer handle because this thing doesn't go in all the way. There we go, that should be enough, he says, having not really used this ever. So this is probably my third time hot air soldering. <laughs> oh well. You can 3D print them. Oh, so I have a metal one that I found on, um, on AliExpress and it will be three pounds delivered. And I thought, oh, that'd be, that'd be good. I'll get one of those. There we go. Do you want a little, do you want to come in a little bit and see that? Probably should have done that to start with. I'm, going, I'm sort of missing some on one of the pads there. I'll have to just sort of get in there and. Hit it with a little bit. I have to readjust that chip now. Don't do this to me. There we go. Let's give that a go and hopefully it all works out. If not, I'll um, put some flux on it. Whoa, let's turn that airflow down. I'm going to have to get the tweezers out. Sadly, I use tweezers in my right hand, uh, left hand, and I'm using the... Using the uh, hot air gun in my left hand.
Yeah, it's not overly clean. I'm just going to put some flux on it just to see if they'll all draw together a little bit better. Oh, yeah, it's warm, I forgot. Just wait till it cools down a second. In fact, I'll put it in front of a fan. Let's see if that makes any difference. I've no idea though. Again, as I said, it's like um, <laughs> the third time I've ever used the hot air gun. It'll probably all just evaporate by the time the get, thing gets up to the right temperature. Okay, let's leave it there. That will do. It's quite warm, but I can hold it on this end and show you. Some wee, wee dags of solder there that I'll have to get out. But fair enough. It's always a lot cleaner when I do it by hand, honestly. So, oh, that did clean up all right, actually. Yeah, that looks okay, doesn't it? Okay, bodge wires. I mean, I can see you all saying things in the chat, but I don't know what you're saying. Because I can't go and read them all. But I can see something about this 10 meg resistor. <laughs> I'm going to be using... Oh, let's, we don't can come out for this. Going to be using Kevin the stripper after I've cut this wire a little bit. I'm going to use black wire so the bodges aren't quite so obvious. So I need to go from that side of that resistor to this side of the crystal. And Kevin was set up for much thicker wire before. And sadly, I can't grip that, so I'm just going to use a pair of pliers. There we go. We're going to need to use the uh, soldering iron now. Okay. Soldering iron is on. Julian, you, you are relentless. Thank you very much. If it turns out it is R2, then I'll get the hot air gun out and we'll change it. But I don't think it is. So, let's, well, we can just bring the focus up here, can't we? My hot air, no, soldering iron, it's on. Let's bring it over. 
try not to burn the cable. That would be nice. Let's just tin that little wire. Don't, don't you all start. I've only had half of this beer. I'm not, I'm not ready for all these shenanigans. Oh Lord, I've put too many things on this desk. Right, so R2 to the crystal, okay. Turns out I could have probably just soldered straight onto that crystal or soldered the crystal with the, with the soldering iron. I mean, that's not very well on there, but let's try that again. There we go. And just put a bit more solder on there. Most definitely could have just been a short bit of wire. But there it is. Bodge wire complete. Hopefully my arm wasn't in the hole. You guys. <laughs> Honestly, you're absolute monsters. <laughs> <laughs> what even is going on? All right, this, how long have we been going for? Don't know, like an hour? Something like that. I've barely drunk any of this. As you know, that is very unlike me. I have got another beer in the fridge, so I can go and get that if we need to. So next, we've got one two more bodge wires to put on. So let's get to it, because otherwise I, this will just descend into madness, I'm fairly sure. So we need a bodge across there, which we're going to do with the end of a, a resistor or something. I'll just go and grab something. There's one right here. So we're just going to put that across those two, so it needs to go across there. And then we need one more wire going from the other side of R1 to where I've bodged onto R2. Uh, but we'll do that in red. Do we want it in red? I'm not ashamed of having a bodge wire, so I'm going to do it in red. It's fine. I mean, it's entirely possible that there'll be other things on this board that don't work but we can work through them one by one. <laughs> Andy says, I can retire on R2. You might be right. Andy says, I've had two bottles this night and now about to go to bed. Oh, Rene, <laughs> for a new cold beer. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Julian, what have you started? All right, let's have this. Oh, I don't think this is going to work. Kevin the Strip is great, but he's better for bigger wire. I don't really have a reliable method for doing smaller wire. Actually, I do. I just don't know where it is. There we go. That's done. Off you go, Kevin. You're not needed now. Right, and now we need to tin that. So let's do that. God, are we going to be able to do this one-handed? Maybe. 
Yeah, all right, we will. Just be able to do it. It's a very small bit of wire. <laughs> And it gets quite hot, wouldn't you know? And it does just fit. So let's do that. You can chop it down a little. Just, <laughs> I've sort of just chopped all of the. Uh, the tinned bit off. We'll do a little bit more on this one. There we go. Right now again, we we'll need to add a little bit more solder to R1. <laughs> Clive would be proud of me. I don't think Clive knows who I am. Well, that's not true. I sent him one of those binary crap clocks a while back. Oh, these tweezers are rubbish. These are these ceramic type, but I just don't find them as good for gripping stuff. So the metal ones work much nicer, much nicer, much better. That looks terrible. Well, that looks like it's definitely on, so that's good. I need to bring you over a little. Let's clean that iron a little. I don't want you both pinging off at the first opportunity. Ugh. It's a little ugly. But I'd wager it's connected, so let's get the multimeter out and check. <laughs> if that works, you'll eat your vocoder. Well, I do hope it works. Sometimes there are things when you make them in a breadboard where they don't work in a real circuit just because of the nature of the breadboard, but I think I think this one will. Connected. Connected. Okay, now just that one there. I'm just cutting a bit of this off. <laughs> yep, don't know where that went. So we'll use this one, <laughs> the bit that I didn't want. There we go, got it. Is that, it's just stuck to my finger. Let's see, is that gonna work? Yeah, that'll be fine. Hopefully we can just do that, uh, God, this resistor thing. Uh, it's Myco is here. I got his name wrong before, I think. Oh no. It is stuck on the end of the bloody soldering iron. Come on now. Just... We're going to have to turn the board around. I can't, can't do it from that angle. Because I am cack handed, as they say. And I'm trying to be dexterous with the wrong hand. Oh, come on. 
That's good enough. Just freaking solder on there. Well, that is ugly, but done. Well, that's also done. Are you connected yet? Yeah, whatever. That's fine. Now, the last thing, we are going to put the USB connector on. I think we all knew it was going to have to have a bodge, didn't we? There's like no way it wasn't going to. Which is kind of good in a way, you know, because... No, I'm just going to have a little rest from, from this for a second and just talk to you. Oh, Which is kind of good in a way, when you make mistakes. Because um, I guess it means that I've learnt something in the end. If, if I have to fix it, <laughs> then I don't know what I've done. Oh, the problem with this mistake though, it's nothing to do with a knowledge gap. And it has everything to do with either having a couple of beers and then doing a schematic or doing it when I was tired or more likely is I threw the stuff in there and went, oh, there's my components. I'll come back and finish this later. And then I just imagined that it was right. And so I didn't check. And, you know, I poured over that schematic for quite some time before I sent it off to JLC PCB to make because it isn't cheap. That's quite a large board, really. So it's like, it was like 30 quid for, how many got 10? Fuck. 10 rubbish boards that all have to have a bodge. Um, yeah, so it wasn't super cheap. And that's, that's kind of disappointing, really, that it's all down to thoughtlessness or is that the wrong way around? Laziness, anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll pour some uh, some of the beer on the the curb or something for the thing. <laughs> right, let's do the USB. Now, I guess this is one of those hot air moments, isn't it? How are you meant to heat up? What the hell is this? What are those two pads in there? Well, the footprint provided said they were there. It's better bloody fit. It does fit. That's okay. Okay. Yeah, it might be difficult. That's okay. I've just put my hand in that solder, look. <laughs> nice. It's going to be fun is what it's going to be. No, it's not. Maybe it will be. Let's so get some fresh blob of that stuff. I've lost my toothpick. I guess we'll have another one. Boop. Boop. That's the sound of the solder paste. Well, that's way too much. So, while I'm doing this boring little bit, tell me what you've all been making. It's not USB-C, it's micro. Because USB-C is expensive. It is right now, anyway. Uh, especially when you only want to buy 10. really difficult to see this. A 
but I think that is good enough. I'm going to put solder on those bits, but it doesn't look like it actually has that on the device, honestly. Despite that being the footprint from... What are they? I don't know, from Mauser, but I think they're a, um, a Molex part. All right, that is it. Let's pop it on. So what's everyone said? Let's have a look about what they're up to. No, oh, Andy says drag solder it. I don't actually think I can get my iron under there, actually. There's, um, there's not a lot of room and I got a fat tip on my iron. Jay's Vape Reviews is here. Hello. I remember you from a while back. I don't think I've seen you for a while. Mark's been designing a lots of PCBs. Maybe I should do a stream. Yeah, you should. Absolutely, mate. I'll have a look. I don't know if I'm subscribed to you. I hope so. I'll have a look after the stream. Julian, you do need to start live streaming again. Right, have I got steady enough hands to do this? Oh, don't start. Boop. That looks roughly right. <laughs> Heaven knows. There might be far too much paste on that. We'll see. Right, I'm going to turn the air speed, air speed, it just says air on the box. I'm going to turn that down and I'm going to try and go directly over it, but I want you to be able to see, so I'm not going to do that completely. So this is one that I don't want to have to rework. There we go, I think that's maybe done. It's quite hot, but luckily it's long board, so we can do that. So do you want to have a little close up look and then you can tell me whether it's done or not. Hang on, let's just move this around. I'll try and find it, there it is. Well, I think the pads are a little anemic. But I'd wager they're soldered. What do you reckon? I could probably go over it with the iron a little bit, couldn't I? See how much space there is there, not a lot. What I'm going to do with the iron, I'm not going to go over the like the pins. I'm just going to um, go on the outside casing so I know it's secure. Maybe feed it onto the pad, David, and not onto the soldering iron. Well done. <laughs> Move some bits out of the way. There we go. Just so it holds together a little bit. Right. 
let's see. Yeah, I think we're going to do the front bits too. Or as well. So that's these sections here. But I think the uh, the actual power and data, not that we're using the data, they're not connected. They're shorted together. I think that's probably okay. Last test is just to make sure none of those pins, well, not all of them are shorted to ground. Which will have happened if I put too much paste in and it's, actually, you know, it would short to the, um, whatever this bit's called, I can't remember. Um, I have a resistor that goes to ground over here if I want to um, attach it to ground, but I can't remember what it's called. No, they're not connected to that, good. So now I guess we power it up, right? And then we measure and see if it's oscillating. All right. Let's give that a go. We'll have to just come out a little bit so I can bring the multimeter in too. Don't, Julian, you behave now. If it is, we'll just have to rework it. It's not the end of the world. So I need power. How am I going to do that? What have I got? Power bank. Power bank, power bank. There you are. Micro USB cable. Yes. Oh, we could have put the power LED on. That would have been nice. Hmm. That cable doesn't work very well. Oh, it's a bit bent. I'll choose a different one. I like that one because it's got like a really floppy silicon cable, but I'll choose something else. Let's see what I've got. I have to take this mic off. Solder in the connector, yeah, I hope not. <laughs> Although anything's possible, isn't it? Uh, I think it's just a rubbish cable, honestly. Yeah, just a rubbish cable. Now, it's not gonna keep the power bank on for very long, but hopefully long enough to probe something out. So I need a capacitor on ground, and then let's just see if we're getting any voltage, actually. I don't remember what pins, five volts. Yeah, the power bank is off. What have I got that can keep the power bank alive? I know. Sorry, Mike's coming to come off again.
Yeah, I can't actually think of anything, but <clears throat> I've got this uh, little, <clears throat> excuse me, little cheapy power bank, um, and I don't think this one turns off. We'll soon know because the lights will go out. Let's see if we can't read some blooming voltage on here. Hmm. Nope. Time to figure out if it's drawing a huge amount of current because it's shorted, maybe. Right, I've got one of these bad boys. What is it, like a Rui Deng? or something. Let's see. I mean, it could easily be, it could be anything, couldn't it? It could be the USB cable. Yep, you're drawing 200 milliamps. Well, that seems like a short somewhere to me or something, but definitely not 200 milliamps. It should not be drawing. What is hot? Nothing. Time to check the shorts. Oh, it is an illuminated cable. Maybe that's, oh, good shout. Let's get rid of it. And we'll choose a different one. Damn it. Yeah, it could be drawing that much. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just looking for a cable. How don't I have a ton of these lined up? Okay, I've got this one, but I thought it was rubbish before. A good spot there. Right, that's upside down. Let's bring it around for you so you guys can see it too. I sort of have the feeling though it's probably still uh, there's a short involved because 200 milliamps. I'd be surprised at that cable drawing that much. Well, maybe. If it if this is turned on, the output's on, which means it's feeding through, so it should be all right. So maybe this was a... Well, there we go. Nope, doesn't like being on. So, do we have any freaking voltage? All I'm trying to do is figure out if the... Bloody cable's good. Connector. Yes, it is. We've got five volts, which means if we're quick, we can test the frequency coming out. Uh, what pin do I need? Let's jump to the desktop and have a little look at the pin. So on our schematic. So the pin on this one is pin 12 and it's going to pin 14 on the 4017, so which way around is it on the, where's pin 14? 14 is the third pin in here, so I need to test that one and we should see one kilohertz. So let's do that. Sorry, I've not been looking at chat for a little bit. I don't want you guys to think that I'm ignoring you. I'm not. I'm just sort of engaged. 
But yeah, you are absolutely right. It was that cable drawing 200 milliamps and nothing else. It did scare me though, I have to say. So if we're very quick, and well, we're not going to be very quick now because I've got to turn this into Hertz mode and make it so you guys can see it. Oh, that didn't do anything. Okay, so press the button, get my ground and pin the third pin along. Hey, hey, there's our one kilohertz signal. And so that's the input on the 4017. So that's the clock pin. And the 4017 is a decade, well, it's a Johnson counter thing. Um, and so that's going to give me a 100 hertz. So divided by 10. So R2 was not 10 meg. It turns out. Whew. Oh dear. I almost sounded like I knew what I was talking about for a bit there, didn't it? <laughs> you would not believe what I've done to my desk here. Have I even got my phone around? Yeah, I have. I'll tell you what, I'll take a picture in. <laughs> and you can have a look on Twitter or something. Oh gosh. Remove anything with my personal details on and other people's. Probably. <laughs> it looks awful. Hang on a minute. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Camera. There we go. Oh God, you can see me double chinning it in the background. Great. Just, just checking, making sure <laughs> there's a work thing. Doesn't really matter. No, I'm going to post it so you guys can see what I see, which is really weird looking. Tweet. Hashtag. Do I? No, I'm not hashtagging it. I'm just going to tweet a picture. There we go. So, yeah, I feel like. Whoa! What's this? Unexpected maker. What are you doing? <laughs> That's very kind. Thank you. Do you know today, honestly, you've, you've made up the cost of, of the PCBs, you lot, all posting Super Chats. That's very, very kind. Thank you. Yeah, I've spread paste everywhere. It's, it, I've rubbed it on my shorts now, but it was on, the, <laughs> on that, whatever that bit is in your hand. Oh dear. Yeah, I've got, who knows what I've just posted in that photo that's revealing, but you never know. There's a schedule, there's a work schedule over there. <laughs> there's a thing about a live stream. Oh, I've been using StreamYard for work and I did a six hour live stream the other day. That was crazy. He almost completely said it while entering it. What? And did I say my password out loud? It's only because my finger won't work as the unlock. Because I'm sweaty. Because it's hot in here. It's just a number on the thing. Um, yeah, look, what's the temperature in here? 24 degrees, apparently. <clears throat> Delete that, unexpected maker. <laughs> Delete it. It's 4321. Oh dear. Um, what was I saying? Well, I'm glad that we can do a small bodge on this thing, so... and make it work. It does mean that I can continue to well, build one, and I wouldn't feel too bad 
about selling them if I had to do the bodge bit first and had to make this bit. 86 degrees? What even is that in real money? In like, uh, what's the thing? Hang on, I can press a, can I press a button on here to make it change? No, I can't. Uh, what's the X-Tal frequency of that crystal? It's um, 4.096 million. Million? <laughs> Megahertz is what I mean. 30 degrees C. Whew. This is too hot for me. I'm, I'm sweating right now. You'd have a go at putting it together if you had a picture of the bodge wires. Yeah, I think I would too, but you know, I kind of want it to be simple to assemble and do so. Um, how many people are called David Watts? Do you know what? There's someone else in Leicester where I live called David Watts, who a friend knows, which is kind of weird. Yeah, I'd like it to be fairly simple. Do you know this USB connector's on a bit wonky? Only by a, like a degree, but it's too much. Maybe less than a degree. So next time, we're not going to do any more on it today because it's getting late, but next time we're going to populate the 4017, 4026, and the first digit and see if that's working. And if it is, I'll take the digit off because I won't be able to solder with these uh, the seven segments in. Let me show you what those seven segments look like, actually. I'll jump back down to the desk. Look at the state it is in. I'm not having this. Hang on. Let's get rid of all this junk. And then I've got to take the mic off again, sorry, because I've got to go over there and grab the displays. Sorry about that. Leonard, when was that? If you're in your 30s, I may know one of the David Watts you're talking about. All right, here's one of the displays. I'll tell you what you can get. Oh, that's all the displays. <laughs> uh, Let's just pop all the displays in. I'll tell you what, Julian, I've got 10 of these boards. If you want one and you can get hold of all the components, let me know and I'll post it out to you. And you can check whether swapping R1 and R2 would have worked. Let's see if we can just guess our way here. Wouldn't it be amazing if we can just drop this on? No, no, just, oh well, we'll have to do them one at a time. So I am fairly excited about making this. Oh, do they fit? Yeah, they do fit. But I also want to make sure that it'll be easy for everyone else. So I'm gonna take my time. I need something to put on the back. What have I got? Cassette tape's not gonna cut it, is it? It might.
There we go. So that's what it's going to look like. That's kind of pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, sellotape was a great idea. I don't have any up here, though. Let's see if we can't focus a little bit on that. There we go. So yeah, that's going to look all right. I'm kind of happy. So one thing I don't like about this is that I felt the need to have a reset button because the idea is this is not just a clock. Oh, that one's upside down. How, how <laughs> is anyone getting really, really annoyed by, <laughs> by that being the wrong way around? Because it's really getting to me. It's going to have to come out. You want to know what color the LEDs are? I'll show you in a second, actually. We can light them up. Let's just pop it out and put it back in the right way. There we go. Um, yeah, the, the reset. Why did I make it so big? It's like not, it's a function of a stopwatch, sure. But it's not the function of a normal clock and it being quite close to start stop. I don't know what the sensitivity is going to be like on this because I'm using those TTP one still upside down. Right. Well, it's staying that way. Uh, <laughs> damn it. Yeah. So I should have, I think display on off would have been better off being that button there. Um, and that could have been reset. So you can, we can turn the displays off. There's a display inhibit pin and it, I cascaded it down all the ICs. So it'll turn the whole thing off. And then minutes and hours are by the minutes and hours. So that seems all right to me. But that that's a design mistake. So I may change that. All right. Let's have a look at the color of those LEDs. Let me just turn all of that stuff off. Hopefully my multimeter will light one of them. I don't really have a lot of other options. Oh, I am still in the process of deciding what um, what uh, colour resistor to use. Right, I think that one's common, is it? It doesn't like lighting them. They look red. They really are not meant to be red. Right, let me check on the packet. It shouldn't be red. They should be orange. Mmm, it doesn't say on here, but it has a QR code. So I'll just look on my phone. One, two, three, four. And we'll see what that says. Does it go to anything? No, it doesn't go to anything. Um, I'll have a look on the web now and find out. Yeah, it could be not enough juice. Uh, what do I have that I can do this with? Uh, don't really want to solder anything to it, mind. Let me get um, the power supply going. I'm going to have to turn my mic off for a second.
Right, sorry about that. So I've got my power supply hooked up. I've put a five milliamp limit on it. So I'm hopefully not even gonna drive them at five milliamps each segment. And I've not turned it on. Oh, idiot. There we go, it's turned on. Now I just have to remember where the common, it's common cathode. So that should be common. Yeah, so it is an orangey colour. It's not it's certainly not red. I'm not using their decimal point. So they at no point will be lit up. Let's see. If we can't focus a little bit nicer than that. Sorry, my camera does this jump in thing. Which I like, but not when I'm streaming. Oops. So yeah, that's the color of the thing. And I think that will complement the black quite well. I kind of like orange. I did try and get yellow in this surface mount um, format, but I couldn't get it, so. Yeah, it looks a lot more, I mean, it's, it looks more saturated to my eyes. And actually it's, uh, yeah, it's quite nice. I'm going to see, if, so I want to draw, I want to run them at um, about 1.5 milliamps. So let me just change that on my power supply. And I'll put it down to two. And we'll see what that does. And the reason I want to do that is because the 4026 not really designed to deliver a massive amount of current. Oh, that's the wrong way around. Yeah, so they still light up. It's quite a nice colour actually now. It's just like a an orange. That's certainly visible at two milliamps. So I can't see why 1.5 won't be an issue. I won't be, uh... able to light the thing. Perfect. Right. I think that's it for me. I think I'm going to call it a night. Um, but I'll, I mean, I've not looked at the chat, so let me have a little look and then, um, We'll sort of pack it up. I can't believe it. I've almost had one beer in two hours. I'm just sorry. I'm just scrolling back through the chat. How does the audio sound, by the way? I've sort of got a new setup for today. Which is going through the lab mic. Usually I use the this big thing, oh, you can't see it, this thing, but I can't get it in front with the camera here, so I've had to switch out. Yeah, I think it will too, Ethan. Ethan says um, it'll look slip with the black PCB. Yeah, I think what I really wanted like yellow because I've got yellow on the, um, on the breadboard one, but finding yellow is yellowy green color. Uh, it's hard in these surface mount ones, unless you pay, I mean, they can be really expensive. These weren't cheap at all. They're something like 50 or 60 pence each. So, uh, what was it? £4.50 a board, I think. So for eight of those, it's about £4.50. It's going to cost a lot. Julian <laughs> says, awesome stream, funniest ever. That's because you do derailed it, Julian. Uh, but it's fine. Thank you for derailing. It was funny. You really... I got quite flustered there for a bit. Uh, Jet Gyro Tech says, I like your clock. David, are you still on lockdown? Yeah, sort of. I think it's a bit of a relaxed lockdown now. So um, 
I can go and see my friends, but you've got that two metre distance. So I went and played football the other day with uh, a couple of them in the park, just booting the ball to each other. Because uh, I haven't played football now for like probably a hundred days or something like that. And I used to play twice a week. Sion's being cheeky. Sorry, can you say that louder? Uh, Ivo says, what do you use for your audio? Um, I almost instinctively went to unplug it and show you, but that won't really work. So I'm using a Zoom H1, which is a cheap little handheld recorder. And I've got a little lavalier mic. This is a, a JK044 is the lav mic. It's about 15 pounds on Amazon, so it's pretty cheap. And the um, Zoom H1 connects through to your PC with USB. Um, so it's a little bit janky, but you can get those Zoom H1 things like dirt cheap on eBay. Mine's five, six, six years old, I think. I use them for work as well. I've got um, the newer version of that at work. It's just a nice handy little recorder to have. Usually I use a, a Marantz MPN 1000, which is a condenser microphone going into a UMC 204 HD, which is um, an audio interface, USB audio interface. I'm probably going into too much detail, but a lavalier mic is what I use, or a lapel mic, whatever you want to call it, really. David flustered Watts has a nice ring to it. Hairdressers, yeah. Uh, hairdressers are still closed, so I'm still cutting my own hair. I've done it three times now, like. Uh, I get, get the scissors out, do the, the top, and then buzz the sides and the back. So yeah. Anyway, that's going to be the end of the stream, I think. So thank you very much for coming. I've got to spend some time tidying up before I go to bed, or I'm going to be really annoyed at myself in the morning. So um, I'll turn that off. Well, I was thinking that, Julian, that I don't, maybe I don't need to go and get the uh, the haircut properly again. Maybe I can just keep cutting it. Okay. Peace out, all. Thanks a lot for coming and hanging out with me. I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. I'm glad something sort of worked out. Well, you know, whatever. All right. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>